Chapter 11, A Mad Tea Party A table was set out under a tree in front of the rabbit-shaped house, and the March Hare and the Hatter were having tea at it. A Dormouse was sitting between them, fast asleep, and the other two were using it as a cushion, resting their elbows on it and talking over its head. That must be uncomfortable for the Dormouse, Alice thought. But since it's asleep, I suppose it doesn't mind. The table was large, with many empty places set for the three were all crowded together at one corner. No room, no room, they cried out when they saw Alice coming. There's plenty of room, said Alice, annoyed, and sat down in a large armchair at one end. Have some juice, the March Hare offered. Alice looked around the table, but saw nothing to drink but tea. I don't see any juice, she said. That's because there isn't any, said the March Hare. Then it wasn't very polite of you to offer it, Alice replied. It wasn't very polite of you to sit down without being invited, the hare snapped back. I didn't know that it was your table, said Alice. It's been set for many more than three. Alice noticed that the hatter was staring at her. Your hair needs to be cut, he said bluntly. You shouldn't make such personal remarks, Alice said. It's very rude. The Hatter opened his eyes very wide on hearing this, but all he said was, Why is a raven like a writing desk? Well, thought Alice, we'll have some fun now. I love riddles, aloud, she said. I believe I can guess that. Do you mean that you think you can come up with the answer to it? said the March Hare. Exactly so, replied Alice. Then you should say what you mean, said the March Hare. I do, Alice said. At least, I mean what I say, and that's the same thing. It's not at all the same thing, the hare cried. Why, you might as well say that I see what I eat. It's the same thing as I eat what I see. You might as well say, added the March Hare, that I like what I get. It's the same thing as I get what I like. You might as well say, the Dormouse chimed in sleepily, that I breathe when I sleep is the same thing as I sleep when I breathe. It is the same thing with you, said the Hatter to the Dormouse, and the conversation came to a halt. The group sat quietly for some time while Alice tried to solve the riddle. She thought about everything she knew of ravens and writing desks, which wasn't much. Eventually, the Hatter broke the silence. What day of the month is it? he asked as he took his watch out of his pocket. He was looking at it uneasily, shaking it now and again, and putting it up to his ear. The fourth, said Alice. Two days wrong, sighed the Hatter. He then dipped the watch into his cup of tea, pulled it out, and looked at it again. What a funny watch, Alice remarked. It tells the day of the month, but it doesn't tell you what o'clock it is. Why should it? muttered the Hatter. Does your watch tell you the year? Of course not, she replied. But that's because it stays the same year for such a long time. One doesn't need a watch to tell that. Which is just the case with mine, replied the Hatter. Alice was puzzled. Doesn't anyone in this place make sense, she wondered. I don't understand you, she said aloud to the Hatter, as politely as she could. Ignoring Alice's comment, the Hatter said, The Dormouse is asleep again. The sleepy creature shook its head impatiently and said, without opening his eyes, Of course, of course, that's just what I was going to say myself. Have you guessed the riddle yet? The Hatter asked Alice. No, I give up, Alice replied. What's the answer? I haven't the slightest idea, said the Hatter. Nor I, said the March Hare. Alice sighed wearily. You might do something better with the time than wasting it asking riddles with no answers, she said. If you knew time as well as I do, replied the Hatter, you wouldn't talk about wasting it. It's a him. I don't know what you mean, Alice said, confused. Of course you don't, the Hatter snapped, tossing his head. I'll bet you never even spoke to time. Perhaps not, Alice said cautiously, but I beat time when I learn music. Ah, that explains it, said the Hatter. He doesn't like being beaten. 
If you would keep on good terms with him, he would do almost anything you liked with the clock. For instance, suppose it were nine o'clock in the morning, time to begin lessons. All you would have to do is whisper a hint to time, and the clock would go round and twinkle. Half past one, time for lunch. Oh, I wish it was, the March Hare whispered to itself. That would be grand, certainly, said Alice thoughtfully. But then I wouldn't be hungry for it yet. Not at first, perhaps, said the Hatter, but you would keep it at half past one as long as you liked. Is that the way you manage? Alice asked. The Hatter shook his head sadly. Not I, he replied. I had a fight with time last March, just before he went mad, you know. He pointed his teaspoon at the March Hare. It was at the great concert given by the Queen of Hearts, and I had to sing. Twinkle, twinkle, little bat. How I wonder what you're at. You know the song, perhaps? I've heard something like it, said Alice. It goes on, the Hatter continued, like this. Up above the world you fly, like a tea tray in the sky. Twinkle, twinkle. Here, the Dormouse began singing in its sleep. Twinkle, 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 twinkle. It went on so long that they had to pinch it to make it stop. Well, I had hardly finished the first verse, said the Hatter, when the Queen jumped up and cried. He's murdering the time. Off with his head. How dreadful, exclaimed Alice. Ever since then, the Hatter went on mournfully. You won't do a thing I ask. It's always six o'clock now. Is that why so many tea things are set out here? Alice asked. Yes, said the Hatter with a sigh. It's always tea time. And we have no time to wash the things between whiles. So you keep moving around the table? Asked Alice. Exactly so, said the Hatter. As the things get used up, what happens when you come to the beginning again? Alice dared to ask. Let's change the subject, March Hare interrupted, yawning. I'm getting tired of this. I vote that the young lady tell us a story.